Thank you, Jen. Um, and uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us for this meeting. It has been an amazing couple of hours with amazing uh, presentations shared and discussions. So uh, to kick us off, we have three lightning talks. Uh, we have one from Suruchi on, on products. Um, sorry, just me. Yes, focus on product management. And then we have another one from Ellen, uh, which will be focused on uh, women. And then the last one is from myself, which will be focused on uh, OpenMRS QA. And uh, without further ado, we'll be kicking it off with Suruchi. Uh, she's already shared with her video, which I'll just uh, go ahead and um, uh, present on the screen. And then um, Ellen, you can be getting ready and then we'll follow. So, let me go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm sorry. Make sure I share the sound. All right. Yeah. Hello, I'm Suruchi Dungana. And I'm going to talk about product management. Uh, can everybody hear the audio? Is audio clear? Yes, yeah. we can hear it. Yeah. Okay. Great. So what is product management? Product management is an organizational function that guides every step of product lifecycle from development to positioning and pricing by focusing on the product and its customer first and foremost. To build the best possible product, product managers advocate for customers within the organization and make sure the voice of the market is heard and heeded. So what is product management process about? Actually, it consists of 3D, discovery, development, and delivery. In discovery phase, product manager advocate for what are we building and why? What should this new product achieve? And how do we measure success? Product manager is involved in road mapping, prioritization and development phase, and in delivery in QA, release, and marketing. But the product management and project management are often used for the same work and the same role, but they are quite different. So what is it all about? A product manager's role is strategic, much like a CEO of the product. But a project manager's role is more tactical and primarily focused on the execution side product managers tend to need to be a good project manager. Product manager and project manager skills are often overlapped, but product managers need to need a strong project management skill within their approach like leadership, time management, and communication. Product manager actually breaks down initiatives into tasks. In addition to that, product manager make research, identify problem and opportunities, and clearly understand need. Product manager also plan project timeline and communicate project progress with a stakeholder. In addition to that, product manager set product vision, communicate and validate vision with a stakeholder. In summary, project manager deal with how and when, and also <laughs> product manager deal with what and why. But product leadership is hard. Thinks a director of products would be ensuring for an empowered product organization is to make vision a reality. So director of product is involved in product vision, team topology, product strategy, team objective, product discovery, and product delivery. Product management and open MRS. In open MRS, product manager not only launch product, but also think about what the success metrics would be, then use the result to iterate on new version of the product. We design with customer rather than for customer. We believe customer may not know what they want until we show them. So we make our one-on-one -on -one with user feedback oriented, and we often have separate one-on -one session with users to address their issues and make them feel we are actually working for them. We involve engineers in roadmap in user stories meeting and use engineers idea while addressing users requirement. We use roadmap as a tool of communication. As an example of how we use roadmap as a tool of communication, earlier we used to have a detailed roadmap of uh, different bullet points explaining what in, is in our now design and future cycle. But now we use visuals for roadmaps, showing what are we releasing now, 
what are in our design cycle and what we are considering for future. And this has really helped us to connect with our implementers as a tool of communication. In OpenMRS, we have different product management level from level one to level five. PM in different levels should have different skills in communication, discovery, development, and delivery. For example, PM in level one should have communication skill within the team, but a PM in level three should be able to communicate with the stakeholders, keep users and stakeholders up to date outside the OpenMRS as well. In addition, PM in level one can support with the manual testing and support in release node, but a PM in level three should communicate with the team about QA plan, overall product acceptance testing, and identify some of the automation opportunities. Further, if you have any questions regarding PM levels, product management, and project management, please reach out to me or director of the product, Grace. Thank you. Um, so um, that was uh, a lightning talk from Suruchi. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that. Uh, without further ado, if you have any questions, just please post them on the chat window and uh, the respective members will see. Further ado, we can then go to Ellen. Ellen, if you're speaking, you're on mute. Um, I'm going to unmute you. Thank you. Okay, great. Can you hear me now? Yes, now sorry. I can hear you. Sorry. I am going to start at the beginning. My apologies. Um, we're we've been doing work partners in health for the past 30 plus years in haiti um our hearts go out to the situation in haiti and many places around the world where you work um, and live because we know that there's all sorts of challenges but i do want to to think about our colleagues in haiti especially in the past couple of weeks um and what Partners in Health has been doing uh, most recently is we're um, providing a great um, impact around the world in the 11 countries that we work. Um, and these include 58,000 um, uh, facility-based deliveries around the world and um, all sorts of other things, including prenatal care and the number of women uh, starting family planning each year. Um, specifically in Haiti, which um, Partners in Health works in and provides um, healthcare for more than a million people, uh, we also employ over 6,000 staff and have um, more than 2,000 uh, community health workers. So that gives a context of the extent of the, of the work. And uh, I'd like to highlight the fact that there's a, many um, innovative projects, including this latest one called Journey to Nine Plus program, where 95% of the women in this program uh, have facility-based deliveries, and that's at Mirbelay Hospital. The national um, number is 56, 50, sorry, 36%. Um, and to give you an idea over these uh, five years that we've recorded, that's at, in Haiti, that's a lot of prenatal and postnatal visits. And uh, our timeline is that we started uh, deploying, we deployed the PIH EMR 
which was the reference application uh, in Haiti in 2013. It's great to see all the um, great progress since that point. Now we're talking about the next generation of, of user experience. Um, but we've layered in all sorts of capabilities uh, from what we provided initially and always rolling back into the community. In 2019, we provided this Journey 9, J9 for prenatal and delivery, um, where we only collected a small amount of information. Um, but now in 2021, we're, the point is that we can provide paperless, um, point of care, um, uh, OBGYN visits, that include a whole variety of women's health features, not just prenatal and delivery, but this whole variety of things. Um, and that's built upon many things that the community has provided. Um, and these are the kinds of encounters that you would see at women's health. Um, the OBGYN form, this is a visit page, so you can see uh, a template. So these are made up of multiple HTML forms that have a uh, close uh, follow with what the woman is, um, what the process is while the woman is visiting and the forms it's, uh, themselves that are built uh, from HTML forms. Um, features include the following things, important things like dispensing and lab and program enrollment and relationships. And these are the kinds of things uh, we want to include in the future for women's health. Uh, one last point. I provided those slides at the beginning to show how much work is going on on the ground on behalf of our patients and care and treatment. But the whole goal to round it back up to EMR is to try to make uh, our patient care and our staff health better by providing an easy to use um, system where information doesn't have to be tallied manually and take up a large amount of time. Thank you. Yes, um, sorry, thank, thank you for that, um, Ellen, and perfectly within time. Um, Next is myself, so I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Present the right and put on the time. All right, um, so I'll be talking about uh, OpenMRI's QA test processes with a special focus on automation. And also just keep in reminding people that um, for quality assurance, we should always think about it from the beginning and not towards the end. And so to start us off is, this is where we started from. <laughs> So as part of last year, when we were trying to do a release, when we were trying to do um, a release, uh, we were working with spreadsheets for manual testing, uh, and whereby we had volunteers come in on board, helping us test and manually log their results. Where we are at, as per the moment, as this year is we currently now have um, a QA dashboard that's currently available on GitHub and whereby you're able to see in a snapshot uh, what's the current status of uh, some of our key products. So we have the platform, which is what you can see on the screen here. And then we also have the reference application. In addition, if you scroll down when you go onto the page, which I'll share the link, you'll also see we've already started adding uh, possible links for three point, uh, refer reference application 3.0. Text. And of course, what you get to see here is, um, yes, this just shows you a summary, but when you click on them, you're able to get additional <coughs> sorry, information, including like what tests have been run, what are successful, uh, which is what you're seeing on the 
left side of the screen. Um, here, this is a cucumber report and this is a bamboo CI report. And how have we been able to do this? So just to quickly, yeah, just to quickly take you through our process is that um, through with the support of our, uh, of our QA engineering team and of course other members and volunteers, uh, we started off with a process of of course, uh, drafting out uh, the requirements, then we added them onto a JIRA board, uh, which in form of tickets in which uh, QA, uh, QA engineers, fellows, and of course, volunteers would then take them up, uh, write up the syntax, of course, the, and of course, the feature files, and then using, um, depending on type of test that they're working on, in which in this case, we've been focusing on two, uh, we've been having resurrection, uh, we've been resurrecting some of the previous tests that have been there, and so that has been been done using Selenium and of course um, in anything that has to do with the reference up 2.x uh, every of the automation has been done with Selenium and of course we have another work which has been done with Cypress which I'll talk about and then after we have the test automated we have them running and you're able to see the results in the possible ways that we've uh, listed which is bamboo uh, cucumber robots and of course the summary that you're seeing on github now for us to have gotten here, it has been quite a journey, which I'd like to walk us through, in which we started with a team being formed in the last quarter of 2019. Then we did what we called um, landscape analysis on the tools and technologies. Then we went to uh, prototype and proof of concept. Then we went to expansion after doing the proof of concept, we went into expansion and a lot of documentation. And then as we got into Quarter four, we started have uh, we was a focus on getting on fellows and volunteers. Um, as the beginning of the year, we had a lot of mentorship happening, being led by a QA engineer, and of course other members coming in, just getting on board on how to write automated test, and of course with a focus of whereby we've. Um, done quite a number of test automation where we can currently say in terms of our coverage um, given with the test we are we are currently we can say we're at 80 um, percent moving forward for the reference application um, 2.x and just to add is that um, it's not just we have just not been working on resurrecting the tests that were there before we've also worked on some of what we called workflow based testing um, Grace had, had shown some of this earlier, uh, like for example, a clinical workflow, uh, registration and such patient, which are supposed to easily help me identify um, what are some of the areas breaking in a nutshell and also just is it now to the process of testing when it comes to a release. So beyond that, we still do have additional works that are currently in progress. The focus has not just been on the reference application uh, 2.x. We do have uh, work happening in terms of automating tests for the OpenMRS 3.x. And in this, we are having Jay Sanka, uh, who is working on that and already has a few tests which have not yet been committed, but it can already be seen on uh, Git in the GitHub repo. We also have a uh, work that is also happening within the dictionary management squad in which we're having members like Juliet and Hadija who have uh, focusing on Cypress uh, as a tool of automation, of course, with the uh, Cucumber as the base. Um, so for both the OpenMRS 3.x and that, we still have that. And um, time is up. The lastly, we have interoperability testing and of course, security. And with that, I would like to say thank you. And a special thanks to our team. Thank you, Christine. That was a really nice synopsis of all of the different work the QA support team has been getting involved in. Um, it's it's really exciting to see you lay out the journey like that. I don't know that I've seen it done done like that before. So thank you. And and th thank you to to all of our lightning talk presenters from Saruchi to Ellen to Christine. Um, if people are inspired to do a lightning talk, we still have tomorrow, we have open lightning talk slots. And I think too, if there are implementers here today who want to share their work, um, we do also have some implementation showcase slots available um, in, in tomorrow's sec, um, schedule. So please contact Christine and myself if you are interested in um, getting five to 10 minutes on the schedule. We'll make it work. <laughs>